Okay. All right, everyone. Did everyone download that uh, Dropbox link? So you have uh, the data. Um, so Kara, postdoc in my lab, um, she is an organelle tracking aficionado and has agreed to help us with this uh, demo and instructions on how to actually track things in your live video microscopy data. So thank you very much, Kara, for putting this together for us. No problem. And ideally, with, you've got the link, you can open up the same file that she'll be walking you through so that you can learn with muscle memory how to do these different steps. And then we can you can apply it to the data you actually acquired uh, this morning. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through some slides first, right. which is like background info, and then I'll do the actual the actual demo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, hey, everyone. You already introduced me, so I'm just going to get started. Um, so today I'm going to be introducing you all to TrackMate and going through a little workflow of how to use it. Um, so first off, what is TrackMate, in case anyone hasn't heard of it? So it's an automated single particle tracking software. So single particle tracking is just what it sounds like. You have little particles and they move in time and track the movement. Um, you might want to track particles. So a particle can be an organelle. It can be a whole cell. It can be any you know object in space that you're tracking. Uh, we're going to be tracking organelles today. So you might care about how organelles move in the context of a disease or just in the context of basic biology. You can measure whole cell motility, like scratch wound assays, you can measure cell images, you can do all these kind of things with TrackMate. Uh, so it's a freely available CG plugin. Um, I believe the basic vanilla TrackMate comes included with CG. And it's been specifically design, designed by uh, Johnny Kinevez and his team for analysis of uh, fluorescent bioimages. Uh, it gets periodic updates over time. It's on version seven now. Um, so these slides should be current as of now. Um, so what I'm gonna cover are just sort of the key aspects of TrackMate, and then we're gonna go through a real world example. I won't have time to go into all the details about TrackMate. It's, at this point in version seven, it's a fairly extensive software. Um, so if um, if you think you're gonna be using this software or something like it for your own experiments, or if you just wanna learn more, um, I've put here on this slide a link to some resources so you can read and learn more about TrackMate. Um, I don't know if we mentioned, but I'm gonna make these slides available later. So. That's why they're kind of wordy, so that you could, you can go back for them for reference and check out these links and all that if you want to learn more or just brush up. So when you um, first start TrackMate, what you're going to have to do first is select your detector. Um, so there are multiple different kinds of detectors. I'm going to demo the log detector and maybe the thresholding detector if we have time. Um, the log and dog detectors work pretty well for blob-like shapes. This can be nuclei, this can be lysosomes. Um, they find uh, maxima and just draw a circle around it. And that's how the object is segmented. These, in my experience, are some of the more accurate ways to track. Um, but the downside is they don't work for objects that are not roughly circular. Um, and they also don't allow you to extract morphological analysis, which you can do with some of the other detectors. So once you've selected your detector, there'll be several settings for it. The log detector, these two I have in the box are the most important, your object diameter and your threshold. These are basically what they sound like. You'll set the size of your log with the object diameter. And you'll adjust your thresholding depending on the signal intensity and noisiness of your image. So the second part of TrackMate is choosing the tracker. So this is what links your, your objects in time. TrackMate comes with a lot of different trackers. And I encourage you all to try a lot of them out in your free time. Today, we're pretty much just going to be sticking with the lap tracker. 
stands for linear assignment problem. Um, all the different trackers use different algorithms to make these linkages. And in my experience, the lap tracker works pretty well for organelle tracking. So that's why we're gonna use that one. And this is the step in TrackMate where a lot of the fine tuning is gonna happen. Setting your diameter and thresholding is pretty easy and straightforward. Um, these next few parts can involve a lot more fine tuning. Um, there are essentially three main, you can, great. There are three main uh, values you're gonna need to include at this step. Frame to frame linking mm -hmm. max distance is what it sounds like. It's the maximum distance from frame to frame that you will link an object. For track segment gap closing, this is technically optional. You can uncheck this, but I usually don't recommend that because in almost every live cell or us in imaging, you'll have an object that goes out of focus for a bit or goes undetected for a little bit. So that's what the gap closing does. It allows for some gaps in your image and keeps the track continuous. So the max frame gap is the maximum number of frames you'll allow your gap to be. And then the max distance is the maximum linking distance between when your object disappears and reappears. And this all might make a little more sense when we actually go through and do the demo. There are some optional parameters. There's an initial thresholding step, which you usually don't have to do, but it can be helpful if you have a really noisy image. Um, there are filters you can include. So spot filters will filter out individual objects based on a parameter that you set. You could say if you're using the thresholding detector, you know, I thresholded, but it's still picking up on some noise, but the noise is really small. So I'll filter out anything below a certain radius and consider it noise. Uh, these options are a little bit more limited with the log and dog detectors because they don't measure morphological readouts. There are also track filters. It's like spot filters, except you're filtering tracks. Um, so um, one track filter that I almost always include is a track duration filter. So what that filter is, is you say, I will only keep tracks that last for at least this span of time. Uh, because what you'll see when you do the demo is occasionally TrackMate will see two objects and incorrectly make a link between them. Um, usually this is a very spurious thing. It'll happen for only one or two frames. So this kind of filter will eliminate all those incorrect linkages. Uh, there are also what TrackMate calls feature penalties. So these are penalties that you can put in place according to different features. Um, so you'll pick a feature, you'll pick a number. Um, so I could say signal intensity is my feature. And this will keep two objects with very different intensities from being linked because they're probably not the same object. And you can scale the penalization based on a number that you input. And finally, we probably won't use this feature but uh, in the demo today, but TrackMate does include a track splitting and merging feature. Um, so if your objects do split and merge, so if you have like a dividing cell or, you know, it's infused, sorry, that's my email, um, you can include this in your tracking parameters. So by the end of it, you might get something like this. So this will be our demo image. So this is kind of a, a a quick set of tracking parameters I put in. Um, and at this stage, you'll be able to alter your display options. You can actually use this little wrench at any point to um, adjust them throughout the process. But at this stage, you really want to make sure that you're able to visualize your tracks well, because this is where you'll assess your tracks and say, OK, do, do these tracks make sense? Does this look correct? Um, so there's all kinds of ways to change how your tracks appear, how your labels appear. Um, and importantly, you can also um, view and export quantitative data. Um, so this is really the important part, right? This way you can measure um, things like speed and distance and all that. Um, so TrackMate will calculate this for you. Uh, the track speed is a different way of um, of visualizing the tracks, so it's a little bit small. 
Um, and then if you click, you know, this tracks or spots button, you'll get quantitative information here. Importantly, sorry, this is also a bit small, but there's this export to CSV button. So you can also export all your quantitative results as a CSV file. Um, so at that point, you're pretty much done with your tracking. There are some optional additional actions you can take once the tracking is done. You can plot your values if you want to. You can do plotting in TrackMate. Um, you can save your TrackMate overlay. So those tracks you just saw on the previous slide, you can save those as a TIFF or a, a movie file. You can make manual edits to your tracks and you can use in all kinds of various formats. Getting blown up. Um, so um, I mentioned that you get quantitative information from TrackMate. So here I have kind of a brief summary of the TrackMate output. This is not all of the output TrackMate will give you, but these are kind of um, maybe some of the most important bits. So when you bring up that table, you'll see three tabs that say spots, edges, and tracks. Spots and tracks will probably be the most important to you. So in the spots tab, you'll get your X, Y, P coordinates for every object. Um, you will also get measurements like signal intensity of your object. Um, this is also where morpholo morphology readouts will be. Um, just keep in mind that these, if you're using a log or dog detector, those columns for morphology readouts will still be there, but they're not going to be meaningful because the log and dog detectors just draw a circle of the same size over everything. Um, and then in the tracks tab, uh, so TrackMate actually does a lot of the math for you. You don't need to like go into the XYP coordinates and do all the math yourself necessarily. So TrackMate will calculate things like speed, velocity, displacement, um, track duration, track length, all of this. It'll even calculate things like confinement ratio and, um, and other outputs like that. There's actually a, a whole lot of information about the different algorithms that um, TrackMate uses to calculate this, and that's all available at this link here. Um, and finally, just some little additional tips uh, for using TrackMate I have here at the end. So for the detector, um, it'll actually tell you at the very bottom here how many spots or objects it found. So just look at that number and think like, does this make sense? Like, does it look like I have this many organelles in my image? This is way too high, way too low. Um, the preview button is your friend. Use it all the time. <laughs> You'll be able to see what your uh, segmentation looks like before you go through the rest of your steps. For the tracker, there's um, kind of a, a lot that goes into fine tuning it, right? So, um, in general, all those main settings I talked about, the frame to frame linking, the max gap, um, if those values are too low, that'll result in uh, breakages of your tracks. They won't be continuous. So if your tracks are breaking up, um, probably one or more of those values are too low. Um, conversely, if they're too high, you'll get improper linkages and improper merges of your tracks. Um, so in that case, you might want to either reduce those values or put in some feature penalties or, or track filters. One, uh, some ways I figure out guidelines for setting up these values. So these values are going to vary depending on your data. So something I often do is I find a really fast moving object and I just measure like how far did it move between this frame and that frame. And I use that as kind of a guideline for my frame to frame linking value. Um, there's a similar kind of guideline for uh, the max gap. You know, if I have an object and I know it went out of focus and came back, how many frames was it out of focus for um, where I can still be sure that it was the same object and use that for the max frame gap. And then finally, this value is a little hidden when you're using TrackMate, but when you go to set filters on your tracks, it'll actually tell you right here how many tracks you have. And then just think, does that number of tracks make sense? You know, um, I started with 101 objects. Should I have 123 tracks? Um, keep in mind that this number is probably not going to be exactly the same as your number of spots. You'll have things move into frame, things move out of frame, but it should probably be in the same ballpark. 
And then finally, this is important, you can always save your progress. Wherever you are, this save button will always be in the lower left corner. Um, it'll save an XML file, um, and you can always reopen that in Fiji later to make changes or look at what settings you use, et cetera. Um, you can't just drag and drop it into Fiji. You do this by the load a TrackMate file option, which is in the same pull down section as TrackMate. And then this is my last slide before we get into the demo. Um, there are a couple additional tips for refining the accuracy. Um, sometimes tracking can be tricky and it can be hard to get really accurate tracking results. Um, so this current version of TrackMate includes compatibility with um, various different softwares that are used for um, segmentation of objects. Um, so if you use TrackMate in combination with these softwares, you can uh, get even more accurate results. Um, that's outside the scope of the demo, but I wanted to include that information that you can use TrackMate with these other types of software. Um, and TrackMate also allows for manual track. Oh, hand up. So would you like do segmentation first? And then yes. Yeah. Um, so the TrackMate, you can either use the TrackMate detectors that come with TrackMate or in that dropdown, there will be like elastic detector, MorphoLibJ detector. So it'll take segmentation that you created in another software um, and use that for the detection. And this is often more accurate because it's just um, TrackMate is more accurately able to detect and track each individual object. So like you upload your, your, like your file that you, like the settings file or whatever it is that you saved from Wiko or something like that? Or... Yes, yeah, so I've only used it with Elastic so far, but yeah, it basically imports the segmentation and the segmentation settings that Elastic used. And I, I think it does something similar with these other types of software. Um, there's also, so in that first link on the first slide, it includes like manuals and documentation and walkthroughs of how to do all of this, like how to use it with Stardust or how to use it with MorphoLibJ and all that. Um, there's pretty extensive documentation for TrackMate actually, which is nice. You can always figure out how to do something if you don't know how. Um, we don't have to go into all the details, but this, I've never heard of uh, Elastic. Is that yeah. something like more coding based or is it something kind of like GG? Um, So Elastic has a GUI, like a graphical user interface. I, you can use it for both segmentation and tracking. I've primarily used it for segmentation. It's similar to uh, thing, things like LabKit, where you just kind of paint your background and paint your foregrounds and just keep training it iteratively um, until you get a good segmentation. That's essentially how Elastic works. Elastic is also a free, freely available software. Um, yes, so TrackMate also allows manual tracking. Um, you probably will never want to manually track all of your data because that would take forever. Um, but the reason this is nice is because you could manually track, for example, like a, just a little segment of your time lapse. And you'll know that those values are correct because you, you track them yourself. And then you can compare your automatic tracking settings to that uh, to your manual tracking and look and compare and like do the tracks look similar do the values look similar like are my automatic settings accurate? Um, there's actually an additional plugin for Fiji called TrackMate Helper, which will um, speed this up in the sense that it will take your manual tracking that you did and just compare it to a whole swath of different parameters and it'll just tell you these are the parameters that were closest to your manual tracking. Um, so if like uh, playing with the value um, by hand is too tedious and you're not getting settings that are close to um, accurate, you could try something like TrackMate Helper. Um, so that's it for the slides. So now going to, uh, I've got PG open here. I'm going to start the demo. So, uh, all right, here's our file. So uh, these are lysosomes. Um, in this case, they're from a human fibroblast. Um, so a slightly different cell line than what you guys imaged, but it's similar. 
So you can see these some lysosomes kind of wiggle around in the same place for a while. Others are really zipping around back and forth, right? Some are brighter, some are dimmer. Um, so this is a pretty good test set. So you're going to go into plugins on Fiji um, and go down to tracking. And then that's where TrackMate is. Um, I have a lot of extra stuff in here, but everyone should have TrackMate. I'm going to click it. So <laughs> this window comes up. Also, if I'm like going too fast or anything, just <laughs> let me know. Um, so these are just kind of the uh, the pixel info and time interval and all that for your image. You don't have to change anything at this point. So we're going to go next. And this is where we pick our detector. So we're going to start with the log detector. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different detectors. These are like the elastic and morphology J detectors I was talking about. That's the thresholding. If you wanted to um, manually track, you'd do manual annotation. Uh, but we're going to do log. Um, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, TrackMate includes little descriptions here along the way for each of the detectors and trackers to give you like a little bit of background about how they work. Again, the link I included in the slides includes a really detailed description of how all the detectors and trackers work. We'll pick log detector and we'll hit next. So here, I usually just keep these boxes as default. Uh, you can play around with them if you want. But what we really want to play around with is our object diameter and threshold. So right now, it's set to a 10 micron, a 10 micron diameter and zero threshold. So let me preview that and see how that looks. It's not great, right? <laughs> um, the spots are way too big. So we're going to make this smaller. Let's say one micron. Preview. Closer in size, still not good. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff here, right? Um, actually, let me, this is gray on gray. It's a little hard to see. At, at any point, you can hit the wrench and change how your look. I'm just going to go with that to make it a little easier to see. OK. So. Looking at these, these seem just a little, I'm just gonna play around with the size for now. These still look a little bit big. I'm gonna make them a little smaller, 0.7. A little closer, but it's picking up on all this stuff, right? And that's because our threshold is set at zero. We're not thresholding anything. So even a little bit of signal is gonna get caught as a spot. So we need to increase this value. Just set it to 10 and see if that's a, that's a lot better. If I crank up my brightness a little bit, oops, just so I can see, there's some dim ones out here. And I think our size is okay. There are some that are smaller and there are some that are a little bit larger, but this is a pretty good, pretty good estimate of the diameter. I might make the thresholding a little less stringent. Let's see. OK, that's pretty good. So it caught that guy. It's not really picking up on any of this haze back here. So this looks pretty good to start with. We have 114 spots. Feels reasonable. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Um, whenever you change these values, you do need to re-hit the preview button to update it. Something you can also do is like scroll through and check a couple different frames. Make sure it looks good on, on all your frames. So far, it seems to. Let me go over here, preview. Pretty good. Let's go next. It's going to calculate the detection. It's going to move too long. There we go. Hit next. So this is the initial thresholding step I mentioned. I usually skip this unless it's a really noisy image. So we'll go ahead and skip. It looks noisy because I cranked up the, the maximum, but it's not too noisy, actually. All right. Um, so this is where you can set your spot filters. This is also optional. Um, at this point, I'm not going to set any because I 
don't necessarily think we need it, but if you wanted to, this is, uh, these are the different uh, things you can use. These are the different uh, features. Um, remember area, circularity, these aren't gonna work because all of our spots are the same in circles. That's how the log detector works. Um, you could use something like um, mean intensity to filter out like really dim things, but for now we'll leave it. Hit next. So now we have to pick our tracker. So list of trackers here. Um, as I said, we're gonna stick with the lap tracker. The only difference between lap and simple lap is simple lap doesn't allow you to merge or split tracks, but it's the same algorithm. All the other trackers use slightly different algorithms. I'll say lap. There's a little description here and a, a reference to the paper that they use to get that algorithm. And then uh, here is where we uh, change our settings. So TrackMate remembers the last setting you use. That's why my TrackMate is already populated with a lot of things. Yours probably is not. Um, so I'm going to get rid of splitting and merging. We're not going to deal with any splitting and merging for this demo. Let's uncheck that. And for frame to frame linking, remember this is the max distance that an object can move from frame to frame. So let's uh, let's scroll through this movie and see. Let's find a fast moving object and see how far it goes. Right. So I think I think this guy here these two guys they move pretty fast right they go way over there pretty continuously so let's uh here, let's say this frame mark it with my finger on my screen sorry you can't see it and then goes to there so i'm just going to draw a little line from where my finger was to where it went Measure it. so it moved about 1.376 uh, microns. So we'll set my max distance to 1.4, just, just a little over that. And then down here for our gap closing, um, I, I looked at this movie ahead of time, so it takes a little bit of time to really investigate how long things go out of focus. I didn't want to sink too much time into that. So uh, when I analyzed this image earlier, uh, most of the lysosomes didn't go out of focus for more than like four frames. And if they did, I wasn't sure if it was the same one that it moved so much. So I set my max frame gap to four. And then for max distance here, I usually play around with this value a little bit. It's typically higher than this max distance because it disappeared for a few frames that might've moved a bit farther. Um, Maybe we'll set this to like, actually 3.6 is pretty good. It's higher, but not extremely high. And we can always go back and change these later. This isn't like set in stone, right? So let's start with this. We'll hit next. Calculate the tracks. And then hit next again. This is where we set our track filters. Um, so I already have track duration on here. As I mentioned, this is one of my favorite filters. You can set multiple filters if you want. You don't have to set just one. Um, but let's go ahead and keep a track duration filter on here. Like I said, sometimes you'll just get little spurious connections here and there, and you don't want that. That's noisy data. So right now, this 50.34 and above, that means it's only keeping values or tracks that last more than 50.34 seconds. Uh, this is seconds, not frames. Uh, keep that in mind. So um, for this particular image, just for reference, each frame is about two seconds. Um, that's just the way this image was acquired. I, you, you all probably already know, but in case you don't, if you go up to show info, it'll tell you. Frame interval right there. Um, so 50 seconds would be about 25 frames. So that means that the track has to last around 25 frames. That's a pretty long amount. So we'll we'll keep that for now, see how it goes. 
All right. So I'm going to change my my display a little bit to make it a little easier for me to see. I like to do the track ID just because then I can kind of uh, visualize each track. And I'm going to scroll through and see how these things look. Um, you can uncheck fade track sometimes and you'll just see the, the entirety of the track. It's kind of nice to see it at the very end to see like how much ground was covered, but it also makes it really hard to see individual tracks, right? So fade in time is nice. So this looks pretty good. I'm not seeing too many, um, you know, incorrect track connections. These, um, so you'll see some have this gray circle around them. That means they're not connected to anything. So due to either the settings that we chose or the filters we applied, um, those tracks got, uh, did not get counted in the total. So um, TrackMate wasn't able to get a good continuous track for those. Maybe they went out of focus too much, or maybe the signal just wasn't good and the detector didn't detect it continuously. Uh, there are various reasons that that can happen. Yeah, so you'll see like this one over here. It's it's just kind of in and out of focus a whole lot, so it wasn't able to get a good continuous track. It's going to be pretty challenging to get all of these lysosomes counted in continuous tracks. Uh, that's just kind of uh, the nature of these kinds of data. Um, this is all right. I do see a little bit like over here, kind of a ping pong, whoops, ping pong looking thing going on over there. Things teleporting around. So that's probably an incorrect linkage. So it's it's things like that that you want to look for. We could go back and introduce some feature penalties to try to continue tweaking it. Uh, so for this, um, it doesn't look like too many of our tracks are splitting. So I don't think our values are too low. Um, but I don't think we need to change that. I think making them too much smaller might cause our tracks to split. So that's why I think I want to try adding a penalty instead to try to keep it from linking obviously different organelles. So do a frame to frame. So these are all the options we can choose as our features. Um, remember area and perimeter, those aren't going to work because segments are all the same shape, but you can use something um, such as like a mean intensity because it is measuring the intensity within your circle. So if you have a really, really bright organelle and a really, really dim organelle, yes? Sorry, I was on the set build those on tracks. Mm -hmm. Did you go back and then you just hit back and you went back? To the... Yeah, so this back button will, yeah. So oh, do it again. Yeah, so this back button will take you back to previous settings. You can always, that's why I say you can always go forward and back and change your settings. Um, you're not locked in. Uh, yeah, so with mean intensity, this is kind of a good one because if you have a really, really bright lysosome and a really, really dim one, they're probably not the same lysosome. So a connection between those probably isn't correct. Um, and then this is where we weight our penalty. The default is one. Uh, let's bring it up to like two. Let's see what that does. Right. So right now we have 183 tracks. I believe we started with 120 something spots. So that's not outside the realm of reality. It says 312 here because that's how many tracks we had before the filtering. We don't actually have 312. That's why I say it's a little bit hidden over here. 183 is what we have after filtering out all the little various connections. And as you can see, it, it, there's a lot of those. So it's an important filter to have. Let's see. There's still a little bit of ping ponging over there. These very dense clustered areas tend to be the most troublesome areas because organelles are already so close to each other. You get some incorrect connections like that sometimes. Um, 
what you have to do is just kind of keep playing with it. Like I said, with those tips at the end, you could manually track a section and compare the values to be really sure. Um, because visual inspection is great and it's important. You should visually inspect your tracks. Um, but it's hard to catch everything by eye. So if you want to be really sure, um, manually track, and then you'll get um, values here. So this is where the quantification is. You could save it as a CSV. Here, I'll, I'll save this one. Demonstration. If I hit save, so I was on the spots tab. That's what it saved. It saved this table, the spots table. Um, put it here. Oops. Here it is. So here's all the data for every single object in the time lapse. It'll be a lot. <laughs> um, and here, like the area and perimeter are all the same exact number, they're all the same exact circle. Um, but you have all the different x, y, z coordinates. Um, so to save tables for these others, like you would hit the tab, and here's the tracks. And all the, the data are here. So we can keep playing around with settings, but since we have the time, I want to go ahead and demo one more of the detectors um, so that you can see how other detectors work. Because log is pretty good for uh, fairly accurate tracking, but you don't get things like the morphological measurements, and it doesn't work for like a mitochondrion or something that's very tubular. So let's go back, all the way back, for a detector. So uh, let's demo the thresholding detector. Um, the thresholding detector is exactly what it sounds like. It just thresholds your image and draws a contour around all your objects based on the thresholding. So it does give you an option to auto-generate your threshold. Let's preview that. Mm, not very good. I'm going to change this again so that I can see my outlines. That's better. So it's thresholding way too much, right? It's leaving too much out. We're going to make this value smaller. Um, I cheated and did this earlier, so I know it needs to be a lot smaller. Uh, this is better. It's still leaving out some little guys. All right, so let's make it even lower. That's better. So it's getting most of the objects and not picking up on too much noise. You can check another frame, see how this looks. Pretty good. Check another frame. Pretty good. I'm getting 111 spots. That's about what I was getting before with the other detector, 100 and something objects. The simplified contours just kind of smooths the edges. That's what this box does. I pretty much always have it checked. So we'll move on to the next step. And that's pretty much all there is to the thresholding detector. We'll all go through the rest of the steps so you can see how it tracks. Um, at this stage, we could put in a size filter. Um, a lot of times with thresholding, it'll pick up on little bits of noise. The good thing about little bits of noise is they're very small, usually. Usually a lot smaller than your objects. Um, so again, I, I cheated ahead of time and I measured. I measured the diameter and radius of my lysosomes and I found a really small one. I was like, okay, what's the smallest lysosome? I was like, okay, it has this diameter. So I put in a radius filter of, it's very hard to see, that's 0 0.18. <laughs> and so I said, anything with a radius smaller than that, don't count it, it's noise. So we'll keep the same tracker. We'll use our lap tracker. So this has all the same settings as before. Like I said, TrackMate will just keep the previous settings that you use, uh, which is kind of nice, don't forget. All right, did the tracking. Uh, we'll keep this filter on here. We have 118 tracks. That sounds pretty good. Um, my track ID on here. Um, 
my range, and then let's, let's play through and see how this looks. This is pretty good. Uh, I will point out some areas like here, this big blob that it's segmenting as one big blob is, um, I'm pretty sure multiple lysosomes stuck together. It's instances like this where the log detector is better because it works based on maxima. So it actually separates them as separate objects. Um, so there's pros and cons to using each detector. It, it depends on how your data looks. Um, but it's still tracking pretty well. There are a lot of little guys that aren't getting tracked. Probably a combination of the size filter and track duration filters and other filters we've put in are, ca are causing those to just be left out of the tracks. Um, you can keep playing with it. it it's always going to be a compromise. So the less stringent you are, the more tracks you'll get, but you'll probably also get more incorrect tracks and more spurious tracks. And that might dilute your data with incorrect data. So for me, I always go pretty conservative and I just try to include the tracks that are very confident tracks um, because I may be missing some organelles in the process, but at least I know the data I'm getting is, is accurate or as accurate as possible. Um, so this is this is pretty good. You can see our it's a nice long track here for this one. It's tracking all the way. Uh, this one zips along pretty fast, but it's tracking it just fine. And in this case, we're not actually getting too many spurious tracks. I think we put in enough filters to to prevent most of that. Um, but now, if you go into uh, the spots table. You know, drag this out. This is the benefit of using something like a mask or threshold detector. You go to area perimeter. Now we have actual values here uh, for each organelle. So you can get values like the, the size or the circularity of your organelles. And there are other ways to do this in Fiji and other programs too. This obviously isn't the only way to measure morphology, uh, but it is kind of nice to have everything done in one analysis if you can manage it. Um, this is also a relatively new feature of TrackMate. They just introduced the ability to measure morphology with their new detectors. Um, and you can even measure changes in morphology over time, since these are all uh, over time. So if you have a cell that you know divides or something and gets smaller, or my mitochondria fragment and get shorter. Yeah. Does TrackMate allow for like reading facts? Um, Yes, yeah, so the basic vanilla track mate does not, but some of the, um, I think with Sargus and Weka and maybe some other software, if you combine it with them, you can. I don't have as much um, experience with 3D data sets, admittedly, um, but there are ways to do it in track mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you need to use it in combination with another software. Um, but if you do that, you should be able to. Um, so we're done a little bit early, because that's pretty much it. Oh, I, I can show you a couple of other things you can do if we have time. If I go to next, so there is stuff beyond here, right? So this is where you would plot things. Um, I personally prefer to export my data and plot it in other software, but you can plot it here if you want. Um, so I hit plot and I didn't set my values, so it's gonna maybe get a little upset at me. So spots, <laughs> as you, yeah. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I didn't get that. Um, um, the next arrow oh. will take you to plotting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I may have crashed mine because I, I hit a button that I shouldn't have. Maybe not. Oh no, I'm fine. It's just gonna try to plot for a million years. There we go. So the reason it took a very long time is I was on the spot tab and as you saw in that table, there's a lot of spots. Um, so it's taking, there it is. It took a minute. Um, yeah, that, that's a lot of info, so probably not useful. Um, you, so you can change these. You can change your x-axis to whatever you want, your y-axis to whatever you want, hit plot. And there are different values here for links and tracks. 
you could track like speed compared to placement. Yeah, and that plots a lot faster. There are fewer tracks. <laughs> that's how you get a plot. You can save the graph if you want. Or like I said, there's always this export the CSV button to export your data and then do whatever transformations you need to. Um, something I like to do, so if you hit next one more time, there is one more thing past plot. And this is all optional, but these are nice options to have. Um, so you can close gaps, you can export to all different kinds of files. Um, there's more plotting options here. Um, what I like to use is this capture overlay option. So what this will do, um, so let's say like you, you're really happy with how this turned out and you want to be able to look at it again for reference later, or you even wanted to make like a supplemental movie for your paper or something to visualize it. Um, capture overlay, you hit execute, you say, I want to visualize from frame one to frame 50 as the whole movie. Um, hide image will just show the spots in the tracks and not the actual fluorescence. If I hit OK, um, it'll run through. And then it creates this new, it'll say track mate capture of whatever your file name was. Um, so you can save this as a, as a TIFF, for example. You could save it as an API if you want a movie things. So I'm going to save it on my desktop so I can find it. Uh, there it is. So um, if I close track me, close everything, and then go to sorry, zooms in the way. Put it there. There. So now I've I've got this this file with my tracks. And in the display options, you can include, include like labels on your objects. You can include ID labels. There's a lot of things you can do with the display options that I didn't get into because there's a lot of options. But it's sometimes nice to be able to just open up a file with your tracks in it. Um and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm done 10 minutes early, so I don't know if there's any questions or Anything else you want me to try to demo in 10 minutes?